everybody, guess what? We're in Cozumel, and look who I have with me, Gus from Dive Talk. How about that? Yeah, and what, what, what are we doing today, Gus? Okay, so as the official Blue World Plus cave diving correspondent, I felt like Wait, it would that, be- Are you that? Yeah, I oh. gave myself the title. Okay. Um, I felt like it would be good to go over a spool, and I know Todd already did a video about spool, Tech with Todd. Tech and with I'm Todd. Gonna, Let's put, well, the link, he, put the link up here. Yeah, there it is. But yeah. he was talking more about the different kinds of spools. Right. So today we're going to do some quick lessons on how to use this pool. Okay. Just quick tips and tricks. I could use these because I'm not very good with these. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so again, this is uh, things that I've learned cave diving, but these work also for beginners because beginners should also have spools. You actually get to use these if you're like, for example, diving in a rack and you want to know where the downline is and the visibility is not great, you can pull up a spool. This one, for example, is 200 feet, 60 meters, and you can tie into your line and like just go and swim around the wreck and always know that you have a line back to your, uh, your up line, so. We also use the spool a lot of time just to do a jump in a cave. Right. Like you're on the main line, but there's a side passage and there's a line in the side passage, but they don't connect because that would be confusing. So you take out your spool. Correct. Hook them up. So the whole point is, I don't want anyone to take these lessons and be like, I can go cave diving now. Only go cave diving if you're certified, of course. Okay, so we're gonna pull this pool. The first thing you're gonna do is take the double ender and kind of put it away. I like to snap it on the on my wire for the Petrol 3, the, the, the wired computer. But for now, I'm just gonna just hang it here and we're gonna tie up. So we're gonna tie up into this tree, for example. And obviously you have the big loop. You're gonna pull around it and then you go and you're good to go. Now there's people that like to like, you know, turn it the other way to lock it and then do a few turns or whatever. I don't think that's super necessary. Honestly, once you go through the loop, I think you're good to go. Yeah, but yeah. if you feel like you wanna have it super secure, you wanna go against where you came from and then do a couple of spins if you want, that way you're good to go. Cinches it down. Yeah. All right. So then we're gonna walk to this tree right here. And what I'm doing is, is I'm holding the spool, I'm holding it away from my body to prevent me getting tangled, like my tanks, my gear, whatever. So you're gonna hold it away from your body. And then depending on where you wanna go is how I'm gonna make a decision and how I'm gonna tie up. So if I'm gonna tie up into this tree because I'm going that way, I'm gonna tie up differently than if I'm going that way. So for this example, let's say I'm going that way. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go away from the place where I'm going, behind it, and the reason for that is that when I come around and tie it, I have a single line to where I'm going. See? So if I was going the other way, if I'm going that way, I want to come away from where I'm going, right? And go this way. And that way when I lock it in place and I go that way, now I have a continuation of the line. It doesn't go behind the object. It just stays in, on site the whole time. Oh, that is a good tip, man. I did not know that. Yeah. So once again, I'm gonna go that way. So I'm gonna go away from it, around it, lock it, and pull this way. Nice. So good line, same thing. I'm gonna come to this one. If I'm going that way, away from it, around it, lock it. And you can see the line is a single line all across it. So if I get to a point where I'm going to go swim or do anything, I'm gonna tie it up. And I learned this from Ed Sorensen. He, do, he calls it kiss it, lock it, wrap it. That's the three steps. So I'm gonna kiss the line, meaning I can touch the line. I'm gonna lock it, so I'm gonna use my double ender. I'm gonna do a spin on the line and lock it in place. So now it's locked. Then I'm gonna touch it, oop, twice. And then I'm gonna wrap it. And now that is secure. Your double ender points to the exit. So if you come back to the line, you know that the exit is that way because your double ender is like an arrow. And now I can go back and navigate back on the line. Make sense? Makes perfect sense. And what I like about this is the fact that the line is always continuous on our side. Like if I'm feeling my way out, if I'm okaying the line in zero visibility and I come to the tie off, it's very easy for me to follow that jump across that tie off without, it, it doesn't vanish around something. It's like, right, it's coming along. I'm going along with my okay, boink, I'm gonna hit into something. I'm just gonna go, oh, where, where is it? Okay, here it is, and I'm gonna keep going. 
I'm gonna keep going, and I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna come here. Oh, and I'm gonna bump into this. I'm gonna. Just, I'm, I know it's just like it's right here. I can feel it, and then I go here. I don't have to see it, and my hand doesn't have to go around something. It's a good tip. Good thing to learn. We're doing ties in in vertical like columns and things like that, but sometimes you do it on something that is horizontal, like this trunk right here. So, you know, there is kind of the right way and the wrong way to do these. I personally like to go over because that way if I drop it, at least I have the line to resort back to. Even if there's a thousand feet and okay, I lost my spool, fine, I, at least I have the line. But if I do this and there's a thousand feet and let's say this is a railing and then it goes, well now my line just disappeared. So always go over a railing or whatever. That way if you drop it, you can reel it back. Hopefully it's not super long uh, and you can you can bring it back. It just dropped 200 feet. In. Here's another one. Sometimes sometimes you will want to tie into something where your spool doesn't fit. Like if we wanted to go through the slit. Right. So what I'm going to do is the same principle, right? So you're going to just basically bend it like this. You can feed it through it. And let's go from the back so that way the camera sees it better. Feed it through it and then feed the spool through it. And now you have, it's not quite exactly a perfect line, but it's kind of close. And you just went through a slit that doesn't really allow you to fit your spool through it. So there's a few different ways to get around, um, you know, using a spool, but those are some basic, basic lessons. The last thing I'm gonna show you is what not to do when you're, when you're uh, reeling it up. Most people just do this and just, you know, reel it up. The problem with that is that your line will start getting all messed up. Then it twists it around. Yep, it's twisted around. So what you want to do is, first of all, you want to keep pressure on it, on it. And sometimes it's hard, especially when there's current pushing you into it. So now you're losing that tension that you had. So what I do is I like to pull it with my hand and roll. Now I'm keeping tension with my hand. So even if I'm doing this, you see that the tension stays in the spool, right? So you can always you know, re, um, spool it tight into it. And also I do five and then switch. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five, and then twist it around. Tension, one, two, three, four, five. So by switching it back and forward, you will avoid that whole twisting right. on the spool. The other thing is, let me grab a light really quick. So I'm gonna blind the camera. Uh. So here's what happens. So when we use lights in caves specifically, or if it's dark or whatever, if you have an emergency, you're going to flash the camera, okay? But the problem is if you're doing this, now it looks like an emergency and you're just spooling the line. So be mindful of that and keep your, your hand, you know, lined up so you don't tell people you're having an emergency by mistake. So, you know, you're spooling, keeping the tension, just keep the line straight. Even if, you're swip, uh, even if you're swapping hands or twisting it the other way, you don't have to change the hand that is holding the spool. You just, you're now just going backwards on it. So you're just taking turns, swapping it, but be mindful of the light so you're not telling people that you have an emergency. There you have it, some basics on using a spool. Excellent. I learned something. By the way, if you missed the first episode, that I did as a cave diving correspondent where we tackle the whole question of why don't we tether ourselves to the line. That's a fun one. Check it out. There it is. Right here. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be back. Thanks. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our latest episode all the way to the end. You're crazy if you don't subscribe. Hit that subscribe button now so you won't miss our next episode.